championship in a magazine there you come go. to a tournament like this it's never heard of it that's wonderful and everybody knows who you are thank you i appreciate all of hand for supporting me well we got francisco leading one to nothing let's see if he hits his break it's good you know he's famous for having yeah. one of the best breaks in pool period especially nine ball right and if i'm not mistaken he's been clocked at you know around the fastest uh cue ball speed on the break of any player Right, that's a plus, and I've just learned something myself while I was sitting here. I like that shot. He made the one ball on the break twice in the side. Uh huh. He had that shot down pat, and I've seen most nine ball, well, a lot of nine ball players make that shot. So I've learned something myself sitting here. So the play here is the six back underneath him? Six straight back and play for the five cross side. Looks like he took something off that when he swung. When he took two strokes off it, it slowed the speed down. So. Uh huh. You know, the ball spreads, the balls are sliding. So these balls are going to spot now. I'm going to see if maybe I can get this telestrator to work for us. Sure. Well, and maybe you can demonstrate from this position what you think your friend Daryl should do. Cue ball here. Okay. I got the pin. Go get well, you know what? Musaman is a good banker. What I would do is bank this ball. I would bank this ball. Okay, great. This ball? Uh, sure. We'll bank this pink pink ball. I think it's a seven now for sure. Well, he's yeah, gonna try the, to, the pink is the four actually. He's yeah. gonna try to nine cross point, but I would have went this way, two in the corner and had a good safety going. Thank you. Yeah, you know what I've noticed that, you know, having, uh, in fact, I was fortunate enough to come one time uh, to the Chicago Billiard Cafe and watch you play in a tournament there and play Gary Spaith, uh, who, you know, unfortunately we've lost him. He's passed away. Best a great friend. banker. And I know you played a lot of pool with him. Uh, and I noticed that the difference between bank pool in Kentucky and bank pool in Chicago is there's a lot more safety in Chicago from what I could see. Right, right. Uh, Daryl, what got him in his far, you see him banking a lot of shots where you can play safe off. Mm -hmm. And that makes a strong player. Tony Coleman is the same style of banker. Most bankers bank sh like this shot here. He's banking a cross corner, sunk the ball, but he got yeah. good safety going. Good speed, and there's, there's, uh, he, see, this is a patient. That's control, what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, and you control in the bank game. So he shoots the seven ball off, and bring the cue ball behind the six, maybe to the back wheel would be a good shot. He's looking at the spot. He want to hit the three freeze to cue ball on the one ball. That's what he's looking at now. That's a good shot. He's taking a strong look at everything now. He's thinking about the seven ball also and putting the cue ball down and behind the six on the back rail. But that's a pretty tough safe. I like the safe with the one ball. Jack up freeze the cue on the one or either draw it back. That's a pretty good safe shot. It's not the best one, but it's a good safe shot. Okay, so Daryl has made a ball. He's in the lead in this game, one to nothing. And Francisco naturally is leading the match, uh, one game to zero. So it looks like he's looking at the one back at him. And um, I don't know that he can turn this ball, Piggy, but you're the expert, so why don't you tell me? Well, I'll be honest with you. The one can turn because the table is sliding, but you, you don't have a lot of room. Stick, the six is sticking out. He probably can play the ball twice straight back. Okay. If not, I'll, I'll just try our safety here because remember, they're all very good bankers. He's calling this straight back. He's he shooting the five. He's shooting the looks five like he's ball jumping ball. it. He looks like he's jumping the one. That's the advantage of a nine ball player. Okay, here we go. He got the five cross corner. I would like to see him bank the five position for the six or three and protect the lead. Well, I hope during the course of this match you can share some of the Chicago colloquial terms about bank pool that are a little different than Kentucky or the way they talk about banks on the West Coast where I play. Okay, now he he's forgotten that he just got off a table where it was tight. These, this table here with the balls will slide, so maybe because the table is warm, they got to remember that. He's playing tight first time on the camera. So you think when the table is a, a, a little warmer, uh, these balls are going to open up more? Right. When the table is warm, I found that out the last two years I was here. The balls usually slide. When the table is cold, it creates moisture. Gotcha. 
you lose to get the balls usually hang up. Well, you know, with the type of lighting that's employed here for our, our broadcast, um, there's definitely a lot of heat down there compared to the rest of the room. Right, right, right. The cameras, the lights, generate extra heat. He's looking at the two cross corner. I think a good shot be jack up and fight it and, and just fight a three ball cross corner. That's a way we use for speed playing pool. Uh-huh. Well, he's looking. And of course, you know, there's got to be pressure. This is the first tournament he's played in. He's in the top, I believe, nine now in this event out of 407 or 409 players. Uh, we've got an interesting format here. A lot of people go to tournaments that are double elimination. This is single elimination with the opportunity to put yourself back in the tournament for an additional fee. That's correct. And it's called a buyback event. Now, out of the 409, I don't have any numbers on how many bought back, but I do know that the nine players left in the tournament, which includes the great banker Truman Hogue, who got a buy into this round. Oh, okay. okay. That's buy great. His way in. Uh, we've got nobody left that has any buybacks. So this is lose here, you're out. Yeah, this is a nail biting situation here. <laughs> it's curtains. Okay, most of the money made a crucial mistake. Uh, we love Daryl in the patch, that's called. In the patch, now that's in the, but in the stack or in the patch, meaning that he can score a lot from there. Perfect example, I use a, a phrase. If you put a little fox in a hen house, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a lot of feathers flying. <laughs> <laughs> Cue ball get in the patch, where a lot of balls, that ball start to fly across that, cross going in other places. So that's called a patch. Well, we used to call it he's in high cotton in that spot. That's okay. It. That's it. <laughs> I heard that time. That was in San Francisco, you know. It's in well, high cotton. You can learn a lot of things from the pool world. Uh, Boost the mind. Make, he's looking now. He want to make sure that he don't lose control of the cue. He want to keep his safety going. I think he's going to shoot the three off and go back to the short rail. Oh, uh, he made another arrow. Error. <clears throat> And I think Dale knows the tape is sliding. He won't hit the seven with a lot of speed. He's going to cross the seven ball with slow speed and just take one ball at a time. Using the high top English to cross it to go to the back rail. And when he hit that ball, do you think he was primarily hitting it center ball high? Center high is the correct way to hit that is because the table is sliding. It will allow the seven to go as straight as possible. And, you know, you can see the influence of uh, the type of players that Daryl's been around, which naturally includes Bugs and yourself and Ike Runnels. And uh, maybe you go a little further back, Freddie the Beard and yeah, yeah, uh, Watusi Beard. and some of those guys. Yeah, I can't remember. I was going to ask you, what was Watusi's name? Yeah, Horace Poland is his real Horace name. Horace Poland. And then you guys had the great player uh, uh, Romberg there. Kenny Romberg. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those was the great ones, yeah. But, and you can see that influence. In other words, his speed was perfect. That ball, when it stops in that hole... Uh, what may not seem obvious is nobody can bank something in that hole when that ball's there. That's right. That's that's what you call protecting the play. Protecting the play. He's, he, he, he's getting comfortable now, and that could form a problem for Booster Money. When a player jump out and bank five from you from the front, from the break, usually you get tight, but if you come back and you play hard, play hard, play hard, you know, you'll take a little something back from that player. I think it's like being in a fight. Anytime you show you ain't got no quit. Right, you. Yeah, you can wear a guy out even in a short set like this. It's just like a guy without a jab. If you don't have a jab, you're going to have trouble in the fight. There you go. <laughs> it was up in the air in that shot a little bit there. Yeah, that was a crucial mistake. Uh, he played good safety for the first two shots, and his third shot, he decided to shoot a bad shot. Well, it looks like Francisco's got a good opportunity on the pink ball, which, by the way, is the four ball in this television match. And our friend Danny Deliverillo likes to call this an electric chair shot, meaning that if you wanted a reprieve and you had to pick a bank to make to get it, this would be it. Right. That's the shot. This is the... Okay. Bucamante. I, 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 don't, I wonder why he broke the stack up. It looked like he should have banked the uh, four ball and, and slid to his right mm -hmm. from where he was standing. And he would have had position for the nine, three, or the six, maybe the two. He would have had his shots. This way here, he draws the cue ball back and broke the balls up and smothered himself from a clear shot. But he's a good player. He knows all the moves. Yeah, 
that might cost him. I would like to have seen him bank that ball and root the cue ball back. That shows you the experience about playing bank here. He's right. He haven't had a lot of... Uh-huh. He have not been in a lot of tournaments. You can see that for sure. Yeah, because it's not like you're playing a, a, a match play game where you have unlimited time to keep playing. I mean, you got to, you know, if you want to take a risk here, you can get charged quick. You sure can. Well, it's not taking a lot of chances. He had a great opportunity to bait the nine and get back in the game, being one game down. And there's one ball apiece. Now, when he looks at this six ball, you know, Danny uh, has a rule that, you know, when the ball's dead straight in, you can cross bank it without having a potential kiss. Um, you know, is that a shot he looks to you like he might be able to cross bank that ball back in the corner? That's one that me and Danny loves. There's a yeah. reason for that, the statement that Danny made. Usually when you hit the six from that angle, uh -huh. the way to the cue ball going past the ball is putting force on it, and that pulls the ball to the pocket. Your thing is just to hit the ball dead enough so the cue ball can lie on the rail. Gotcha. And, of course, I called it a cross bank, and Danny would, would uh, correct me and say it's a straight back. It's a straight back, yeah. One In San Francisco, when we cut across the face of a ball, we always call it a cross bank, whether cross it's going bank. up table or well, side that's table. that's a correct yeah. statement. It's a cross bank. Because if the cue ball has to go in front of the ball... Yeah, you just stick yeah, in the cue ball, you know, and you're sitting down on the shot. Where we use the term straight back to mean if the cue ball that's isn't passing. Yeah. There's a nice three oh, that's wonderful there. That is... That's wonderful there. Swisheroo. See, that's that bank experience we just got through talking about. Yeah, you pluck them out of there, don't you? That's right. Just knowing the shots. You know, good bank uh -huh. players, that's free stroke. So you think his selection process is he's looking for a bank that's makeable, but he's also looking for one that he can play shot safety off. Right, of. and yeah. Danny would say he's looking for one that he could duck on. He can duck, that's <laughs> correct. <laughs> Pinch and squeeze, Danny said. Yeah. 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 Jason Miller seems like he pulled his match out over there. I'm not for sure. He's playing yeah. De Matlock. Yeah, it sounded like he's played good. Uh, he played a great match against Shannon Dalton that I was lucky enough to commentate on earlier. Oh, okay, great. I missed that. Yep. Hey, Jason, Tough match. We're going to let the viewers wait to buy it so they can see what the score was. Yeah, you better rush up. They'd rush up and get it before we'd be out of it. All right, so listen, we've got uh, Abernathy is uh, ahead of this game and two to nothing. And excuse me, two to one. And the pace of the game has gone decidedly slower than that first game, doesn't right. hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, what you call is in the boxing world is sticking and moving. Players, sticking both players moving. are sticking and moving. They're sticking and moving, that's right. <laughs> I'm a big boxing fan. Okay, Buster Money is losing his steam. Oh, he called that. Yeah, Great shot. Rails, yeah. yeah, good shot. That's now it looks like he's got, he's lined up pretty good on a two railer, it looks like to me, to, to play the three in the uh, two rails up in the corner that he's standing by if he wants to take a chance at that. But what's the jeopardy if he shoots that? Well, that would be a good shot, but the reason why I think he shouldn't shoot it is because the tables are sliding. That ain't going to last three ball to slide into the eight, two in the corner. Got it, okay, yeah. But he, since he's a good billiard player, you see he banked it twice across corner being a billiard player. Looks like he's playing safe here. No, I think he want to bang the one cross corner. Three ball probably won't go. He's looking to call the three ball cross corner. Straight back it is. Yeah, straight back there, yeah. Yeah, that'll go. If you pull it past the one, it straightens up because it slides. See it? That's exactly what it yeah, did. Yeah, it was a tough shot right there, but he almost executed it. Yeah, he could be your player. You can see him ducking, mm -hmm. sticking and moving. So it's all tied up here, two to piece. Daryl should shoot the one cross corner, past the two. It's room to pass it, and it'll be a good safe shot. Yeah, it's a in the in the snooker world they call that a shot to nothing. It means right. you're taking a shot to score, but you're not going to leave anything if you uh, if you miss. That's right. He's looking at a multi rail shot here on the three. Well, he's looking at the uh, one ball as we're looking at. He's knowing that the one could pass the eight, but the thing is to get the cue out the way. But I think the smartest shot would be, yeah, see, oh, he's he using low down. draw, and the cue hesitates. 
and the one ball will go straight back. But he got a low draw on it, just like that. Great swish, shot. Swish, That's swish. That's one of Berg's favorite shots. Uh-huh. See, when you have confidence in what you know, you do it. If you don't know, if you're not going to do what you know, it's going to make you play tight. Yep. So bank yep. is that weight. That's why a lot of good bank players tighten up. And your same three in the corner here. Let's see if you remember how you banked the last one. He, he made that one. Look at this. Swish. Not a swish, but close enough for government work. That puts him on the hill in this game. Right. It's 4-2. Um, now he's a smart bank player. He'll tie these two balls up to protect the lead he got, but I think he made an error here. Uh, the eight looked like in a pass, and the cue ball might wind up knocking the five ball. It could be time to go on this shot. Buster Money looking at it right now, but he's saying to himself, and all let me wait, maybe I can outplay this guy. Eight ball will pass, and the cue ball should knock the five out off, and you'll have position for the spot shot. No, yeah, he had a position for the cross side. Yeah, off. cross side off. Or either shoot the, the two off and play safe because he need them all. I think he's going to try and make both of them is what he was trying there. Yeah, and that's a that pretty was bad shot. There. Yeah. I mean, I think that was his play. In other words, it, it, he, he decided for whatever reason he couldn't see that ball passing or he didn't feel he could execute it. And so I think he was trying to knock two balls, put them both on the spot, and tie him up on the end rail that's and make right, him though. split the balls. What I don't like about that shot was he could have had. Oh, Daryl just hung one up there. That was a. Yeah. He would have been leaving Daryl in a position to shoot the two in. And then he would have been back in the same place. So I, I just it think was he was great thinking, thinking that, right. enough there, yeah. You know, when you're in the, when the camera's in front of you and you got a good strong point in front of you, you make no mistakes. Mm -hmm. But the key to it is try to make the least of a mental mistake. You what? guys. What? One thing I've noticed is that when I'm in the booth, I don't miss anything. <laughs> so, I haven't missed a ball since I've been sitting up here. Unfortunately, they didn't carry over to my matches, Piggy. Right. We've, so, been, yeah. we've been banking out up here. Yeah, we're running out. And he's going to shoot this up on him. This is a good shot. He loves this shot. He'd like to roll this ball with center cue. Oh, look at that. Swish. How well did he hit it? He hit it perfect. And look at the speed that the ball, he transferred the speed. How well did he hit When the strike hit, the speed that he had on the cue ball transferred, and then the nine ball didn't take that extreme speed. It slowed down it when slowed. it got up That's there. what Mill English does for that Pacific shot. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of players shoot the ball with high top, and that's going to make the ball speed up and slide. Mm -hmm. Center English, center right hand is what it's called. 